Let me, uh, get on here first. Don't walk in front. Wait. Hold on.
On these machines are loaded approximately 50 or 60 software programs. Some of them are video disk programs, and some of them are straight CII, excuse me, CII, computer-aided instruction programs. Theoretically, all of the computer-aided instruction programs, the ones that do not use video disk, are loaded on the, on the video disk machines as well. So if they come in here looking for a CAI program, they can theoretically use any of the machines in this room. How have I lost anybody yet? Okay, now, let me get into a few of the common things that you all run into with students using video disks. You've already discovered, no doubt, that the most predominant problem is putting the video disk in upside down. And all of the video disks in the lab, to my knowledge, go with the shiny platter side face down in the machine. Interrupt me with your questions as we go along, because if we hold the questions, we'll never, we'll never remember. I was going to say, given the watch video disk, maybe we should be watching the labor and the living. <laughs> I don't think we'll be watching enough of this to make a to make a difference, but I, I, I take it to my hands as well, well um, When they switch on any of the machines in this room, what should happen is that the machine will go through an introductory diagnostic sequence, including at this point the Norton Utilities Program that will check the disk out and make sure there are no errors in the disk. Okay? And incidentally, I have, um, I've loaded an old version of McAfee on this also. So theoretically, they should be virus protected. Now, how old that virus protection is, I don't know. Willie, how recently have you updated your virus software in the lab on the machine? Or don't we use it? Yeah, we use it. What I think we have the last one we got was uh, two and a half. Okay. Two and a half. Okay. Yeah. Well, so I would estimate that the last revision on these machines is probably at least a year old. Is, do you use McAfee? Do you use, okay. Well, what you might want to do at some point is to, is to reload the new version of McAfee on these machines also, assuming that you have a site license to do that. Well, why would we pick up a virus here if the students aren't putting their own disk in? They can't. They can't. They can't. I mean, they can't. I mean, there is a purpose in putting their disk there is no purpose in putting their disk in that I know of, but if this hole is there, trust me, sooner or later, some malicious student has the opportunity to stick a disk somewhere where they shouldn't. Now, there are opportunities to, to deal with that, and that's something we might want to discuss at some point in putting one of those lock things in these machines. What do you think? That's a good idea. We'll think of it, but they're not. The nurse will understand that we have a problem. The other students have the nurses. Yes, consequently, um, we might as well lock them, because if we lock them, everybody's locked. Well, you know, I'm talking about when we sell things that you put in there with a lockable padlock on it, so you cannot insert a floppy disk into the machine. That's that way, you guys have seen probably. Um, that's a, a good thing to do, and I would suggest that we do that. Um, briefly, the, the penalty is if we get a virus infection on these machines, that some of the software loaded on these machines is not available anymore. And whether we have backup copies available somewhere in the nursing department or somewhere else, who knows. What I don't want to happen here is we start with a software program used in the nursing curriculum that we can't replace. You see what I mean? If it goes down. Now, I have never done a comprehensive backup on any of these machines because they've never bought the tape drive. But I suspect that's probably something that we want to look into at some point through the nursing department is buying a backup drive just to back this stuff up. Some of the DOS-based CAI software is fairly old. It's, you know, eight or maybe ten years old in some cases. It works fine and it still does the job it's intended to do, but potentially if it gets corrupted by a virus infection or just by a disk crash, we won't be able to replace it. So, I guess the reason I mention that in a roundabout kind of way is that um, just to raise the issue of something we need to think about 
or a backup police machine in the bar. And McCarthy and I talked about that. And a virus protection for these machines. If you guys would like to load the new version of the key up, that would be great. Uh, I don't have it, so you know, if you need to license it, talk to me, that's your point. Yeah, it's not really licensed on campus. Okay, so, so I, I believe I've got it from both campus before. But the point I'm trying to online here is that virus infection is a fairly serious consequence for these machines just because some of the software is obsolete and irreplaceable. When all of the machines come up, what you should see after the Norton virus uh, uh, protection and disk analysis software is this thing called the ANS Auto Menu. The Auto Menu is a free, not a free piece of software. It was licensed with these two machines over here, which I'll get to in a moment. But ANS gave the college permission, so Kathy Curtis tells me, to use this menuing system on any of the other machines. The good news about that is that it simplifies the operation of starting up and operating programs. Every piece of software should be accessible on these programs. Um, they are in alphabetical order. The students should know the name of the application they want to use. Now, Ruth mentioned to me that some students, I think it was Ruth, or someone mentioned to me, maybe, no, it was Sam actually mentioned to me, some students have been coming in with a white book and they weren't clear the exact name of the software that they need to use. So then you ask others if you have that experience. What do they ask for when they come in? Right, but apart from the technical thing. No, it's not a thing. They automatically see because they've been told to come to the big plan and everything that you're not making a differentiation between this and the CIR program. And uh, that's one big problem. Well, well that, that that's do they know the name of the program they're using? Do they know when they come in? Sometimes yes, and they've also come in with uh, Video tapes that are supposed to be watching. Okay. Do you offer a facility for viewing videos that you don't in the library? In the library. So you can send them to the library. So I guess the first point coming out there is that somewhere in the nursing department they should be getting the message, and they probably are, that videotape viewing is a library activity and not a computer lab activity. But I can see where that. Well, and that may vary also. I mean, some things that used to be. There are some programs on these machines that have virtually identical titles in both CAI format and an IDD format, interactive video disk IDD format. And that can be that confuses me too. There's one program in particular, I forget the name of it, that's available with both the CAI version and an IDD version. And I don't know which their instructor wants to use. And there's one here, legal and ethical. Of the older ethical, so it's ethical. 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 There it is, right there. Ethical and legal violence. Oh, but okay. see, it's, it's called ethical violence, right. and the title on that thing and the title on here are different. Okay. So, so we can fix that. You know, it's just slightly different. Well, I wouldn't call ethical violence and legal issues and the elder. Ethical. And the, and the environment. That gives me an opportunity to explain a little bit about the AMS menu system and how it works. As I mentioned a few moments ago, the AMS menu was a program supplied with the, the other machines, and it's intended for exactly this purpose. It gives you the opportunity to do two things. Firstly, you can give each program titles. And frankly, the majority of these titles were set in the program before I was contracted to do this work, they were set in the program by the firm who installed the software and hardware originally. And I didn't have a lot to do with it. When I've done it, I've tried to be fairly consistent with um, the titles that appear on the software case itself. Uh, in other words, in some cases, 
those are not the titles appearing in the syllabus or courseware. And I'm not sure how to resolve that dilemma. I get the sense that every instructor refers to these things in a slightly different, um, slightly different way. And that sounds possibly like a nursing issue. Can we take a break? Um, where is the student going? Oh, my dear, I'm sorry. Did you go there? Cut. Cut. Uh, it's there it's not working. Well, assessment of the older adult ID. And I would guess, yeah. Here it's physical assessment of an older adult. So that's kind of close enough. Let's see what this other one is. Nursing care of elderly patients. And I think I remember this one. Okay. Here we have nursing care of elderly patients with chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, and there's nothing on this menu that that um, thank you. There's nothing on this menu that corresponds with that, and I understand where that that is causing you folks a problem because you don't know which disc to send them to. I wonder what the disc is labeled. It's called Nursing Care of Elderly Patients with Chronic Obstructive Pulmonary Disease. Nursing Care of Elderly Patients. Hey. We'd like to take time out to recognize our sponsor for the program. Thomas Nelson Community College. Thomas Nelson Community College offers an extra special session, get an education for a full semester in just 12 weeks. Nursing Care of Elderly Patients. Okay, so here we have a case in point. Nursing care of elderly patients with chronic obstructive pulmonary disease is this one, but this one has a similar title, nursing care of elderly patients with acute cardiac disorders. So part of your problem here is being caused by the similarity between titles of the various bits. And the fact is it doesn't say nursing care of anything. Right, it says, in this case, uh, chronic Pulmonary, I bet it says under. Right, no, it doesn't. Obstructive pulmonary disease. It it Maybe elderly patients with acute. We needed a health water here. A fair, a, a, a fair point, I think, <laughs> has, been, has been well made. Um, now, let me tell you the reason why this problem has arisen. And it has to do with the AMS menu and software. Sure. Can we help this lady who's just sitting here? I'm sure she's finding this fascinating, but she probably has more chance. I get there's no place for me. There's nowhere for her to do it. This one not working at all. This one is. Apparently, somebody turned it off and turned it back on again and did the same thing. So this 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 is this is sick. So. Let's have a look at it. So before. Now, the reason they don't have the same titles on the screen as they do on the discs is this one, for example, has virtually the same first nursing care of elderly patients. The first five words are the same in both discs. And the menu only allows you 30 something characters across there. So you see, that's where the difficulty is occurring with this. Now, I have toyed with the idea in the past, and tell me what you think. I've toyed with the idea of number coding each of these discs. So that disc 51 would be labeled as disc 51 in a book such as this one, they get an idea and an idea. Now, the problem is that I can't make, for some, when you insert a disc, they automatically roll these numbers in here. So I can't make these numbers, 27, 28, 29, correspond to any numbers I would put on the disc. That's problem number one. Problem number two is I have to get the nursing department to change their materials to reflect the code numbers on the discs. Suffice to say... But can we use the same numbers there? Right there, and just no, write because, it on there. No, because when you insert another title on the menu, it alphabetically sorts the title and inserts it anywhere in the team, which is not far more. Okay. Well, we remove the numbers and start all over again on the list. And then we get them there. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah. uh, you know, there's no easy answer to this. I'm saying that, that's what I thought was the easy answer, is just get everything number, but it won't work because of this 
percent increases. Now, from time to time, I have been tempted to suggest to Kathy that we adopt this manual system and get a different manual system that would allow us to write the full time in here. But firstly, we have to find a suitable manual system. Secondly, we have to ensure that we work on DOS, which is a thing that a DOS is with some exceptions. And, and thirdly, we have to ensure that they have the money to pay for it, and I'm not sure they do. Anybody got an idea? Well, we could hire somebody. <laughs> How often do you put new programs in there? An average of once or twice a semester, since I've been here anyway. Well, I'll just put some temporary labels on your software corresponding to those that you can always change when that changes. But then that would change the syllables. Suffice to say, in order to get a close one-to-one -one correspondence between what's on here and what's on here and what is on there, we need to find a way around the 30 character limitation of these lines. Well, the, again, the, when you put the title in, you can put the title in with the number. In other words, yeah. five. Yeah, I thought about that too. But then you're going to get this, you're going to get two rows, a column, two columns of numbers. Yes. And then they're going to wonder whether they refer to this, this 27 first column or the you know. So there's no quick and easy answer to this. Uh, and the problem is exacerbated because like this, many of the titles have the same first few words and are only differentiated by the last few words in the sentence, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease or um, cardiac disorders. Cute. And if I could just... Yeah, absolutely. But you're the consumer. Because, I mean, that's what's important. Like, nursing care could be in the city. That could be the same for all of them. Right. Everybody would know that. Elderly patients could be ELD, PT. That's, and then that's, uh, what you need, I mean, what you need to know as a consumer is, well, is this the pulmonary or the cardiac? And probably you could even use pulmonary and cardiac and not have all the adjectives that go along with it, like chronic obstructive well, pulmonary disease, if it was other patients hyphen pulmonary, that would be very good identification. Well, uh, and some attempt has been made to do that in this manuing system, and, and some attempt has been made to abbreviate these manuing titles. Now, the approach I took when I did some of these was to elaborate on the menu titles in the right-hand side of the screen. Let me show you what the right-hand side of the screen does, is show a little description of the application. Um, and in most cases, I've, what I've done is to expand on the full, see what I did here, all of these 12 programs begin with Adopt Health Nursing, that's their title. That is presumably what the instructors are putting in their documents. And they have a subtitle, I hear health problems, gastrointestinal health problems, etc., etc. So I put that full description in the right hand side of the screen. Now that helps some, but it doesn't address the basic problem here. And I'm not sure how to address the basic problem. Because what it is, is students are coming in here, and as, as Ruth says, they're saying, well, it says here in my book that I need this with this title, where is that in the menu? Okay, uh, you're, you're saying this is alphabetical, and when you insert something, it changes all the numbers or Absolutely. puts them somewhere else. Okay, why don't you do the title and then dash one? Title dash one? Yeah, I mean, as part of the title. That way you'd know, like, here's number one, number two, and then you can put that number on your software. And wouldn't that work that way? I'm not sure what you suggest. Right for the title. Like, that, you know, just nursing that here's one, two, three, four, instead of putting them over here, put them over here. Well, this would be an alphabetical order. Uh, um, um, it's still an alphabetical order. Yeah, but it would still be an alphabetical order, but like adult health nursing, one, two, three, four, and you just label those one, two, three, four, and it needs to change as often as they want. This wouldn't change. But you'd have to get the teachers to update their syllabus to include that number. They are busy people. And, okay. and, and also, you have the, the same problem, which is potential confusion between the number in the first column and the number somewhere else. On the right the one, yeah. So, I mean, I, the, your point is well taken, 
about the, 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 the problems with this menuing system, but the structure of the software unfortunately locks us into it. Anybody has any good eyes? See, what, another thing I thought of doing was to just, instead of using the adult health nursing title, just use the title of the actual disk, the actual piece of software that it referred to. So just put um, genital urinary under G, say. So, but then you have to know that if a student was working through the adult health nursing sequence, typically they work through a whole sequence and take it, all the adult health nursing courses and they have to work down through them. We'll think about it. We need to think about it. Yeah. But anyway, that's, um, that, that's one problem that you quite rightly address that students are having. Um, disks face down. These disks are virtually indestructible. And I say virtually because you can actually break them and you can actually scratch the surface. But I predict that in day-to-day -day use, you won't have too much of a problem with that here in this lab. As long as the, the overwhelming majority of problems derive from the disks being placed face up in the machine, which is quite understandable. For the benefit of the hardware, it's best if you get the students in the habit of just gently pushing these drawers so that they close instead of trying to sort of mash them into the machine, because I see students doing that from time to time. I see adults, not adults, non-students doing it from time to time also. Um, um, but that's going to be the vast majority of problems you have. If I'm not mistaken, there is one disc, or maybe more, that has two sides to it. Are there any double side discs? <laughs> yeah, there is. You have to remember the time. There might be nothing right there that you can use it. I think And one of them is shiny on both sides, but it says. Yeah, now that, 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 is, that is confusing when they're shiny, shiny on both sides. But it clearly is marked. Yeah. Side one, side two. Well, but it's kind of confusing because um, this says side one. But this is an unplayable side, so a student might reasonably expect to put side one in the machine to watch it first and, and put it face down. So I mean that's that's one of the problems you're gonna you're gonna run into. Okay. Now what else do you run into on the um, on the video disc machine? No picture, no sound. Okay. Sound, no picture. Okay. Um, people complaining that when you hit a, the screen, oh. you can't quite figure out where you should touch it to make it do what you want it to do. So you kind of guess. And sometimes it does the one above it, and sometimes it does the one below it. An excellent point. And that brings me to the difference between Jack and Jill, the two Intelmino machines, and these other two machines over here. If I can track you back in the story to when IBM dumped this Intelmino format instruction, um, a lot of software, nursing software included, was produced in the info window format. IBM didn't make these monitors by the time Kathy and the nursing department expect these two machines over here, bought these two machines. So what they did was bought something called this, I can what it is, the Visage TouchMate system. Believe it or not, how this thing works, in the case of these two machines, which are called Bond and Clyde. How Bond and Clyde work is to simulate the effect of a touch screen by measuring the pressure of the finger pressing against the screen. Normal touch screens, as you know, have some sort of grid or something built into the machine in most cases to sense the heat of the finger or the capacitance of the finger or something. What Bond and Clyde do if you look at these brackets on the back of these machines that hold things up, at the bottom of this arm, there is a pressure sensor that measures how hard the person is pressing against the screen and how much the, the whole monitor is being rocked backwards or forwards. And actually, it mathematically computes from that 
but a position where that's actually tough. So a very flaky approach to measuring touch on a video monitor. And it doesn't work very well. It never did work very well. It never will work very well because it's not measuring actual touch. It's measuring force of the finger. There are two things you can do to improve the performance as lab assistants here. The first thing you can do is to discourage students from moving the monitors. These monitors are sort of pushed in position, but they're not locked down with anything. So if those monitors are moved even a fraction of an inch, the calibration of the touch screen is completely compromised. Which brings me to the second thing you can do to address that. You can recalibrate these touch screens. Would you like me to show you how to recalibrate touch screens? Is it worth me showing you that? Okay, well I'll do that later today when these folks are off with the to pull the camera out and show you how to do it. Um, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. If students are having difficulty with touching the wrong areas of the screen, I can almost guarantee it's happening on volume 5. Am I right? In most cases, it's volume 5. And I can almost guarantee that's the reason why it is. The solution, ultimately, is to buy a new touch screen on to the these two machines, which I'm going to talk to Kathy first about. Because if it's causing you folks too much fixing time, there's not much the student can individually do except to keep pressing it. What drives me nuts is when you keep pressing it and it doesn't register a touch. And you'll have students coming up to you and saying, this touch screen isn't working, it isn't working. And you go back there and you touch the little button for the first time and it worked fine. So the student feels bad and you think, oh, you know, it's working fine. But the reason is that they work intermittently. The measurement system is very unreliable. And there's not a lot we can do about it. All of these touch screens, incidentally, are mouse emulations. And that's the other approach that one of these machines took at one point, actually it's when I moved over to the other building, was they actually replaced the touch screen with a mouse, and I believe that was that touch screen over there. They moved it out using normal monitor and using mouse. But some of these programs are not mouse-driven programs. They have to have a touch screen to work. That is I wish I could offer you an easy solution the best solution, actually, is to ask them to use Jack or Jill, except when the pictures aren't working. <laughs> when the pictures aren't working, um, the first thing to check, the first thing to try, obviously, is to switch the machine off and power it up again. Sometimes that will help. However, in some cases, the student might lose the sequence of instruction they've been following and understandably become a little frustrated. And that's a shame. The um, other approach, after they've restarted, is to check the video connectors in the back of the machine. And I don't know how close you can get, or if you, Where want, are to, you, going? If you want to do a cut and laser on. Um, on the back of these machines. I can get way up on that. <laughs> there are basically two connectors here that are large, uh, you know, 20 or 30 pin connectors. Sometimes it's worthwhile just dupling one of these. Actually, this wait a minute, wait a minute for you, wait a minute for you show her so we can have it all on there. Wait a minute, let me see where we are. Okay. Gotcha. Can you see Chris? Because you're the one that I'm going to send back here. This one, <laughs> this one here, and this one over here. This one is screwed in, or this one is screwed in also. Point to them one more time. This one here. Okay. Labeled graphics input, and this one here labeled IEE488. Gotcha. Sometimes, like any other connector, they get a little bit rusty or whatever, and sometimes jiggling them will improve the touch screen performance. Sometimes it won't. Okay, I'm moving. 
on volume climb. Um, there's not a whole lot you can do. You can recalibrate the flat screens. That might help. What are the problems that you have with students accessing materials? Well, just that no picture, no sound. No picture, no sound. Or Yeah, I didn't mention that to me. We can get some more headphone adapters. The reason, obviously, these machines have built-in speakers. You mean these little headphone thingies here? Yeah. These machines have built-in speakers, but it's kind of like the multimedia machines. You know, if you have 10 of them running here, it would be, you know, they're not So um, there should be at least one adapter for every machine. Now, those two over there actually have multi output boxes to let more than one student listen at once. And sometimes they like to do that. We yesterday we had 13 students coming to the door at the same time, but we only had five adapters. So. Well, this, like, this lab, you know, this lab can't really support it. These machines are one person at a time activities. And we say this from sort of a, um, you know, interactive learning professional, as a development developer standpoint, I'm making things like this assuming that there will be one person using it at once, unless I'm specifically told otherwise. And one of the things that drives me nuts, particularly when I'm working for the government for some reason, is that they expect four or five people to use the same computer in a learning activity. And there are learning activities that you can design to do that with, but they need to be specifically designed to do that. All of these are one person activities. And that's a decision for the lab to make, I guess, about whether you can support and encourage students to share the machine. Now, I, I certainly don't want to be in the business of countermanding anything the nursing department is doing in terms of their instructions to the students. Um, I'm just trying to address the problem of having more than one person. One thing you can do is that they're, if they're not using a video disc program, they use one of these three machines. Use Larry Marl Curve. And I've run into that before, you know. There hasn't been a video disc machine available because the students are choosing these for CRI program. And to that end, from time to time, I've contemplated taking or suggested to be taking the, the, the programs off these machines, the CRI only programs off these machines, just because it's a, you know, um, it would be a waste of resources. That's another question I want to ask. The machines here on that wall, they're just regular PCs with software loaded on them, right? They are regular PCs with software loaded on them, yes. In fact, they have Windows loaded on them in the last case. Hi, So my idea is then they could be, if they need more of those particular type, they can just buy a regular machine and load the software on them. Yes, but there is a licensing question. Yeah. And, and as usual, you know, uh, guys like me are big on licensing questions. And my understanding is that the nursing department licenses these software packages for a specific number of machines. And if there are CII programs loaded on these other machines, we really need to check with the nursing department whether that is kosher or not. Okay. Well, License agreement. Yeah, I would so, I mean, you know, I'm multimedia developer, so I'm big on licensing, and, and um, that's a consideration, you know. Um, right, so as long as that transaction is happening, that's, that's fine. Um, as regards loading other software on these machines, I would prefer if no other software was loaded other than the nursing 
software on it, if possible. Um, just because you, you probably won't need it, but just because I don't have to maintain it and I can't support anything. But you want to put anything on there. Right. Now, I suppose there is a question of the possibility of students putting things on there. But. No, in a um, sense, we're still only assigning nursing to this area. Yeah, but you know, it's possible. Now, let me tell you what prevents that is this menuing system has a password protection. The menuing cannot be altered unless they know that password. And that gives you access to the DOS from all that other good stuff. If you can think of ways to make this menuing system better, please tell me. Send me an email or just write it down or something and tell me because particularly if we can deal with this problem of titles having of discs having similar titles. I'd like to do that. So that students just walk in their, their workbook or wherever it is and say, you know, I want this thing here. And then go show it to that cabinet. Now, the only software that should be in that cabinet are the video discs themselves. I strongly suggest that we find somewhere to keep in you know, a locked or some way secure position the other software and the manuals. They shouldn't be. There are some manuals that are required for some of them. Well, sure. they can't be heard as these manuals should be out for the students because they might well, be there when they do. Okay, well, I, now, I, 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 I stand corrected then because, because, uh, because I didn't know that. Um, Oh, these are, okay. Now, in a couple of... Are there discs in any of these? Has anyone looked at the tape I did for Kathy Curtis in the lab over there that explained all these machines and how they, how you use them? Yeah. Did y'all look at those tapes? No. You didn't even look at it? Okay. Okay. Well, um... If they, need, if they need documentation in there, then, then we should leave the documentation. I wasn't aware of that. And, and um, the, I guess the point I'm trying to make is that if you see any stray disks lying around, please secure them somewhere because, once again, if we lose them, if they get corrupted, we don't have backups. And in most cases, we, we will be in real trouble. I mean, I spent most of an afternoon on the phone in one case trying to get a copy of it. Program it's they simply didn't have it. I ended up talking to the person who developed the software who now works at another company somewhere in Florida. And she thought she had a copy of it. She never seen it. I've got what I believe is all the discs locked in an office at the lot. In good. a staff office over there. Right. Not available the to the students here. Not the software he has, but the software he gave us. No, the software that he had is now in our uh, evaluation room. And so I can show you where it is before you leave. And the little pieces of hardware, you know, cords and things, are in a filing cabinet back here. For okay, the right. So I can show you where all that stuff is. Oh, that door is locked. You know, my Oh, no. It's an evaluation room. That door is locked. Um, I'm sorry to be so hyper about this, but, but I just had this experience of realizing one afternoon on the phone in Florida that if these programs go for some reason, we can not get them back again. The publisher no longer supports them, or the publisher claims to support them, but when you ask for a copy, they just refer you to the, the original. See, the publisher of most of these programs it's kind of an interesting arrangement. The American Journal of Nursing, for example, is one of the publishers of these programs, but they don't actually develop the software themselves. They buy it from someone else, or they commission somebody else to develop it. So you're at least two links down the chain from someone who's actually got the code somewhere. So that's why I'm a little hyper about losing software, and uh, I apologize for that, but I can't go too much. Um, you want to take a break so we've got room for a little bit? Or we'll just go to the machine and start dying. And we'll do it. My flight's in the back. We're on pause. Fuck. You that know the uh, tape I did for Kathy. I'm back. Well, yeah, it was, yeah, it was a drive from the hardware for us. But I mean, it's the other than those, those machines right there, were they ever working? No. 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 So they were never working. 
Now these in most cases, hardware-wise, are placed down to connectors and cables. Okay. So I, that was why I started to think about doing you know, like cars and everything else. Turning my dog, new car, you know, take the car out. The cards are not even available for Jack and Jill. I'm trying to buy the cards. So if they go wrong, we have a serious problem. Uh, what I have resorted to doing is removing the cards, cleaning the contacts, and putting them back in again. And I've had, um, uh, what was one thing I found in there? Mouse problems and the printer. When she gets ready to start, I need something to drink. When I get something to drink, I'll, I'll show you the deal with the printer. I'm rolling. Okay. You're rolling? I'm rolling. Can you stop rolling? Let's put it up there. I'll get some Okay. Oh, my table, man. Are you ready? You know, Okay, first question. Have you ever had sound in this program, or was it just I don't have well, no. From the time I started watching this, so there's never been a second one. Okay. That's a reasonable sound. Okay, working backwards and forwards, the first thing I'm going to do is eliminate headphones, right? Working forwards and backwards, eliminate headphones. See where they are. See where they get sound with a different pair of headphones. Me on that. Hey, John, say something. Okay. 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 Which one do you first get the sound? That's the technical question. Okay. 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 Or it could be something as simple as the connector. Let's go down to the next stage and see if we get any sound out of here. Man, well, at least I was doing it with air fright when I did it. It could even be that fun. Okay. I'm looking at this box here and seeing that this little red light above the power switch is off. Okay. If I switch the red light, it helps to turn on. it on. with these things is that this little switch here, this amplifier is here to drive these speakers, uh, these multiple headphones, that's the reason the amplifier is there. That's going to be switched to the CD tape position, it wasn't switched, it was switched to the button position. Sometimes what will happen is that in an attempt to fix their system, users will understandably start twiddling the other knob inside to see whether they have accidentally switched something so the first thing to check is everything should be out. It should be on the CD tape position, down should be central, tone should be neutral, power should be on. Try and monitor so it's going to help you get This 
vehicle, which is kind of, oh, okay. Um, Boeing and they have a kind of a strange system. They feed audio and video over to the computer board that overlays the video on top of the computer signal. But before the audio goes into the computer board, they split it off. This will come around here and take a look at this peculiar looking connector. Yeah, look at that new connector. One and a half. Side, look. On the vehicle and that one This black plug comes from, um, is going to the, the head buttons, okay? This connector here has an audio video connection coming out of it, and the audio kind of splits out. Can you see this down here? And often what will happen is this plug will become loose or get pulled out of there. So that's an open thing to check. Show that here in the camera. You're showing it to them, now show it to me. Okay. This plug has an audio split out, which feeds audio to the amplifier in the headset. And it feeds video with this cable here. But that is a, and it's labeled with a little loud speaker kind of thing here. That's a weak point of this system, one of the many weak points of this touch um, input on the analysis system. This is in the right place, not to get audio. Stick the headsets in there and see if we're getting all the um, out of there. <laughs> oh, this is interesting. There's, there's a volume control on the headsets. Some of them do and some of them don't. So if the student isn't getting audio, that's a worthwhile thing to check whether they have the audio and turn up on the headset. I forgot that. I'm not seeing the thing like that, but if I'm sleeping in the head or cut it down, so you can scribble down and come on and drop it here, and then cut it back up. Have you got audio? No, there's people talking. Yes. It's got to be over. Although it is just a demonstration of how to stick that stick down, somebody throws look down there, which maybe they just took the picture and figured, you know, me. Yeah, yeah, but then it could be one of the most. Right before I had one in there that when I flipped the CD over, I got the sound. I can't get out for the light and while I flipped it over, it flipped it. Can you find another piece of video on here just to eliminate that as a possibility? I think you know it has audio on it. Well, see, these laser discs have two sides. And it's recorded on both sides. Some of you see these have a... Yeah. Like this one has a side one. Well, this side, side one, can't play it out. Well, this side two. So, they're going to... Yeah. Well, they have a few in there that side one, side two. So, it makes a difference with the sides. You have a little... What a good set of them are. Would you indulge me and try to get on this machine, please? You are a human guinea pig. Okay. No sound. No sound on that. Yes. But sound on well, 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 now, now she's got sound on this. Oh, you do have sound. Uh -huh. Oh, okay. So that's the first <laughs> avenue of approach there, is simply to ask them to try a different machine. You know. Except, usually, every machine is made. Well, that's, that's, that's the problem. And, um, 
that might be where this thing comes in, but they have to spend some money. Uh, the other point I would make to you is to strongly encourage the students to use these switches to turn on and off the hardware. Because how I would like this to work is if they just use one switch, central on off switch rather than switching off the individual items. Because with that amplifier box, for example, the power switch is turned off, so it wouldn't have worked anyway, even if the audio had become off of this. So that was this case where they're turning on and off individual parts of the, uh, of the hardware setup that don't necessarily correspond with the uh, what they need to. So get, get them in the habit of using just this one on off switch. We need to put signs on yeah, there saying cut on here. We used to have one yeah. somewhere. Because I find them often that, that all the components are off. Yeah. See, we don't generally come back here with them. Now that's the problem. Um, because it's just too busy to do sure. that. We only come back here when they're having a problem. So there's no way for us to say, turn it on and off. We need some kind of sign that they Well, that, that, that's the first thing to check, though, is to turn, check that all the individual components are turned on in the, uh, in the, in the system. So let's go diagnose this thing over here, which Rolling. said hasn't didn't have a um, video at earlier. The screen is purple. We want to move out there. Do you want to? What do you want? We want to move over there. So go ahead. Walk in front of the camera. Walk yourself out. Run. 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 Anticipation. This is like waiting for my character generator to warm up. <laughs> you know, I'm sometimes wondering really whether it's even worth writing this. Well, you said you're going to put in a new copy of Mac right? You're going to load. Do you want to do that? Okay. The whole idea is Just get her some It shouldn't need to make a connection. I can't tell you why it wasn't giving audio before. Rebooting the machine in that case. The audio boards inside, inside the machine, I believe, on the video display board, there is some sort of audio relay that switches the audio on and off to the external cable. And sometimes if you reboot, maybe it's doing a pass through audio. I don't know. But that, the rebooting the machine has got to be a central solution to a lot of the problems you run into. And you do have to run scan disk on there as well? I set it up to run it because it didn't even have an auto loaded on before. So um, I set it to run it every time. I can set it to run it occasionally. That might be a thing to do, run once a week or something. Uh, do you have a lot of problems with uh, corrupt power? Well, no. I mean, I have had problems with that, but you know. So, what was the problem here? It was purple screen, is that right? Yeah, well, when they put the disc in, it didn't have no sound. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't want to mess up here. Not today. Not today. Yeah, Bertha is off right now. <laughs> we'll fix that. And when we cut Bertha back on, get your jacket back on. What is this one? Managing experience. Ah, see? Case in point. So here they've got labor next to labor and delivery managing experience, uh -huh. whereas the title is managing the experience of labor and delivery. And we've got two ethics and something else up there, and it 
three of them really, and they got it all mixed up. For them, which we, we were playing pick pick a laser disc and see if we get the right one. It should load the disc and spin it up. It just took work. it from here. <laughs> Did you see people talking when you were watching it on that machine? No. If you were. Because I'm beginning to think there is just no audio on it. Jeez, I tell you. So there is, there is a prime fault correction activity right there. Switch the machine off and let it sit for a few minutes so it cool down and try again. Yeah, just like my car. <laughs> just like the car. <laughs> if that hadn't have worked, the next thing I would check would be the video connectors on the back, disconnect them, plug them back in again, and see whether that worked. Make sure you plug them back into exactly the same place because there are multiple connectors on the back of these machines and it's got to be obviously plugged into the right one to work. Are they screwed on there so we have to get screwed back? Most of them are screwed on. Yes. <laughs> Where screws are available, they're screwed on. Let me highlight the deal with the printer over here. There are two printers. <laughs> the dot matrix printer has a print cartridge on order, an ink cartridge, whatever you call it, and it has had for about three months. And I, if the nursing department have received it, I haven't heard of it yet. So uh, that is actually the printer of choice. Meanwhile, someone, I believe, lent them this printer and there are some instructions on the front here. You've got to press the online button, then press the form feed button, and then press the online button again, and it will print in most cases. Some software does not print. I know that. But right now there's no tumor in it, so it won't And it's out of toner, and I asked them to order a new toner cartridge for it also. I'm not sure whether that's arrived yet either. There is another thing you may run into on some of these programs. There is a section at the beginning for students to register their name and their social security number. And they cannot enter the program until they've entered that personal information. The nursing department give them instructions about how to do that. Because on one of these programs specifically, there are a long set of complicated instructions about what you've got to enter in that to gain access to the program. Has that made it over here? <laughs> no? I don't think it we has. Have. I haven't had a student that want to use it. Yeah, well, we may not be at that stage in the semester yet where they use it. But there is an instruction sheet, and I forget which one of the programs it is. Maybe the RN Computer Challenge. Yeah. Now, in some cases, there are special instructions where they've got to enter a specific username and a specific ID for them to enter it. And there's an instruction sheet somewhere that tells you what those instructions are. Uh, 
Oh, it's this one. Yes, it's orange power. And you have to go into system maintenance. Yep. And you have to enter, I forget what the password is. It's student or class or something like that. And then you hit enter, and anyway, there is, before you get in entrance to it, you've got to enter the right sequence of numbers here. And there is a sheet of instructions somewhere that Kathy produced telling you how to do that. And if it hasn't made it over here, we need to find it. I'll try to find it today. Well, I need to find it for you, because there is a sheet somewhere that each student, I think, receives it in the class also but they don't bring it over here or something. This machine and that machine are, one of them has limited CAI programs loaded on it, but it is a 286 PC. And it's not very functional. The other one, I'm not sure. The combination of this machine and that machine, one of them has never worked, I don't think. The other one is a totally sort of six machine with limited functionality. The printer network is a snap network, not very high tech. And the thing to check is whether the printer connectors are properly plugged into the back of the machine. Before we got the network, does it snap from one machine to the next machine? Yeah, it's a chain, chain, daisy, daisy chain. So it goes around this cable to the printer. But what are these? They also connect the two. They're part of the chain. I ran this elaborate piece of macrame kind of wire work <laughs> around the walls and underneath these rubber strips on the floor to connect them in the chain. They are part of the chain. I believe, maybe they are, actually. Yes, they are. I had a student sit there to print something out. Yeah, they're part of the chain. Have they had any printing problems? Except for the low tone cartridge. The majority of the problems you'll get are problems with when the dot matrix printer gets a new cartridge, it has a lot of problems. And usually, it's just standard dot matrix printer problems. Is there anything else you've run into which uh, we haven't covered? Discs the right way up is one factor. Um, A lot of times, a lot of the confusion with these programs comes from the way the instruction is written on the screen, which in some cases is not that good. It's not, sometimes when I'm testing these programs, it's not clear to me exactly what they want you to do next, or where they want you to touch, or wherever. And without making code level revisions of the software, there's not really a lot we can do about that. <laughs> we don't want to know. Uh, I'm sure. I mean, this is our one opportunity. It's up to you. I'll show you how. We could okay. learn. Yeah. We can like we But you see, if you learn, uh -huh. then you're going to be doing it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I, what if you get some great job offer and move to California? Where will we be? Well, you'll be paying my F there back here. No, <laughs> Kathy Curtis knows how to do this also. In fact, she showed me this stuff. Okay. Well, we'll preach it. Just don't tell us that we've heard this. And we will keep calling you. And we'll 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 keep calling you. I have to remember how to do it. Well, I mean, if you just had some idea of what you're talking about. If 
the touch screens are persistently unreliable. And by persistently, I mean that no students can get them to identify the right touch points. Recalibration is a place to start. But the chances are it's because someone has moved the machine, moved them on. Yeah, this does take quite a while, doesn't it? It's, uh, You know, I, what I would suggest is running in to recalibrate the monitors every time students have a problem with touching. Because, uh, you know, uh, you could waste a lot of time with no potential as well. sounds from what you're telling me that the lab seems to be getting more use here. The machines seem to be getting more use in the lab than they were in the other place. Yes. Absolutely. And uh, we'll share that statistic with you in the unity, so that's the important So you record the use of the machine? Oh, that's 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 a major factor. You're a refresher student, are you? Okay, there are students here which are just coming in to do so just maybe this. Maybe we need to rethink the NCR. That's right. No, because we still need to rethink the NCR. But you're not taking courses for credit, right? No. Right. I have some NCRs, so that's not the NCRs. Yeah. And then I have NCRs that are nurses. Oh. Okay. So no, no. I don't know why you got Okay. Recalibration. Hit the escape key. That's the password. I'll so share with you, but I'm not going to do it on video tape. We can add a new um, I can't see it from here, so if you type it in, I won't see it. Can you write a tape? Can you write a Can you get across Huh? Oh. No, I was going to say, if you wanted to type in the password, I wouldn't see it. Then you wouldn't you did type it in. Oh, okay. Yeah. Can you see? Um, I can't see the screen, but I can. Well, what if you took, can you, is it possible to move that screen somewhere? Uh, I think Ruth needs to move. Yeah. You can't move it. That's uh, whole, you need that's to come out, because that's about where I'm going to stop uh, this leg. <laughs> uh, You know how many times we're going to do that? <laughs> I know you're going to do that. We're going to do it two years from the time it's shown to us. I know we're going to look at each other and say, hello. Okay. What you do is you go into something called the reserve list. When, now, how did you get to this? Okay. It's a reserve list and you put a password on YouTube. Uh, you have to have a password to get out for it. Probably AMS. Okay. That's all right. No, they changed it. Too many letters. No, we don't have to figure that out. Um, we hit F2 for reserve list. We enter the password, and it gets us to something called touch screen calibration, which is Option number eight. This program calibrates the touch screen. And then it gives you four instructions. Ah. It loads this little utility. Exactly. It's exactly what it does. It's a the MIC system is not a very good approach to it. Well, it's, I mean, we're trying to do it because the touch screens cost so much to buy. 
or the food that anybody would provide and monitor if they just have this on the pizza. They give you a touch screen capability. But they can throw it out and whack so easily. But with a touch screen monitor, you can pick it up and move it somewhere. The old ones can do it. Yeah, I mean, I spent a touch screen the other day and it was like, Five hundred and eighty five dollars or something. Yeah. For the first time, yeah, that's not nice. Oh, it's coming out of <laughs> oh. Yes, but they used to, yeah, right, because they used to be like a thousand to yeah. two thousand dollars a piece. Mm -hmm. That's right, that's right. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Is there um, a video of this? Now that is not actually the same calibration as I've seen it do before, which is puzzling. Actually, is a whole set of diagnostic tools to test different things. What's puzzling me is that it isn't giving me the same calibration test as I used last time. I'm wondering whether there's a different version in there than there is in here. Calibration is programming is different. It might explain why this one is putting in that Yeah, this body is better than Clyde. Clyde is a bit. Clyde is awesome. Don't listen to him, Clyde. Clyde's my buddy. <laughs> Me and Clyde have been around the um, around the block. You were allowed to use the saw boxes. <laughs> And whenever anybody complains about the calibration being off or what I think that Well come back here and play with it yourself. Why they're complaining. I can see why, because I've been looking at her and she's hit the button right on her head and it's saying go, uh uh, oh, yes. mm -hmm. And when she goes a little off of it, like, let's say up or left, then she can get the button. So there's a wee bit off. Oh, that's right. I had a support diskette. There's a um, there's a diskette somewhere in the software collection that contains 
diagnostic routines and supplementary programs for this. I think when you stick it in there, it gives you a different Different and that was under diagnostic as opposed to the Yeah, the one I just did was touch screen calibration and that probably worked. But the one I did before was more um, more advanced. You had to actually move your finger while you were doing the calibration, which suggests that it's more accurate. Well, maybe you actually did that for Bonnie, but never for Clyde, because Clyde is the one who is way on. Possible. As I recall, I did it for both of them. Well, I'd see why Clyde is off, because Clyde's monitor over there is moved away from, see the little things at the back? Oh, yeah. If it's not touching those, it's, it's not going to happen. Well, see, this is the kind of thing we need to know. Since these machines have the monitor that they have to audio, it's more likely that the screens are going to get moved when there are more people watching. Yeah. So I wonder if the audio shouldn't be put with the ones that have the less delicate system. You know, I think we tried that at some point, and the problem was that the signal from the touch from the infrared window doesn't match the impedance of this thing here. Um, yeah, you're right. That's what they do do. Yeah, and I they, see that yeah. doing them around. Especially with this one where it has more than one flood. And the sound has more than one flood. Oh, that's so true. Yeah. Kind of yeah. You know, so two or three of them come out at one time. And then, yeah, you're right. And they turn it. So mm -hmm. they Please do not move Shift this and move it. Yeah. Do not touch the smaller. Oh, here's, a, here's some of the setup routine. Align the white band under the red band. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. That's real close. That's real close. The concept is to keep the monitor in exactly the same place is the purpose. Seems like they've given you a bracket to lock it there. Mm -hmm. Especially since it's in yeah, an educational you you environment. Thank you for indulging that. Mm -hmm. It's good that you were here because... This machine, I mean, this program has minimal sound. It has some music at the beginning. It has some guy's voice that says, this is your main menu, and that's the end of the signal. So it either lost its sound or it's, it hasn't lost its sound. I, I wonder whether the software is corrupted in some way and is not telling the telling the uh, program to pass the sound. The right track, yeah. Oh, you know, the other possibility is that the channel is out of whack. That's another possibility. 
some of yeah, some of the, the discs, the VR discs are stereo discs. And in some cases they put some of the sound on the left channel and some of the channel on the right side. And what we're experiencing here could be that for some reason one of the channels is not operational. Much better for me. It's mm -hmm. just I think that that needs to still be
Not this long, Dee. No, it should take this long. You know, so you can see sometimes it just doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. There's pressure on the screen. This, I can see the point about the uh, I just got the
Okay, there's a simple variable here. The variable is how far the screen is from the eye line of the user. And in many of these cases, it's most comfortable when they're you know, about a video of the user. You have to you know, reach out to cope with the touch screen. It's going to be uncomfortable. Yeah. This is your stuff wrong. 